Hello, I'm Gillian Uylian Sim. I'm a seagrass geographer in Malaysia, and this is my story. In 2008, I went to the University of Western Australia for my PhD in seagrass biogeography under an Australia Awards Endeavour Scholarship. Well, seagrasses are really important because firstly, they are the lungs of the ocean. They produce all the oxygen that marine creatures living underwater require. And then apart from that, they actually clean the water of bacteria and pollutants and they stabilise our shorelines against erosion. Most importantly, they are nurseries and feeding grounds for many economically and ecologically important species. But they've been declining worldwide. We think up to 7% is lost every year. We actually don't know what's happening in Southeast Asia. And that's something that's really critical for us to know because Southeast Asia is one of the centres of biodiversity for seagrasses. But we don't know whether the seagrasses there are doing okay or not. So ever since I came back from Australia, I've always wanted to set up these monitoring sites. Uh, today is really important because finally uh, we're starting off this initiative to set up these monitoring sites uh, off the east coast of Peninsula of Malaysia. So we are going to load everything, the compressors, the tanks and all our monitoring equipment onto the lorry. It's going to be a six hour drive and then another one and a half hour ferry ride across to the island uh, called Pulau Tinggi. And this is just one island which is a marine park island uh, within the Mersing Marine Park Islands where I'd like to set up a series of monitoring sites in the seagrass meadows but also in the coral reefs over there. So finally after many years of waiting, that day is finally here, so I'm really excited about that. We have a very short window of working time and in the morning and that's something that's very challenging because we'd have to be fighting against currents but also dragging all our metal stakes and our heavy sledgehammer and all our monitoring equipment and paraphernalia down there against currents to get to the monitoring sites that we want to reach. We will have to hammer in the first metal stake with our sledgehammer. Then we're going to attach uh, temperature and light logger onto it. And we're going to keep it there for the next year or so. It logs every 15 minutes. And then from there, we're going to take a bearing out at 190 degrees um, along a 100 meter line. And I'm going to put down photo quadrants. That means I take uh, photographs of the seagrass every 10 meters. Once the monitoring sites are set up and I go back every three to four months to collect all this data and I see that going on for at least 10 years actually before we build up a really nice database um, and I think that this is something that uh, will be very useful to the marine park authorities for them to actually know what's happening to the seagrasses there. I'd like to see local communities as well as marine park management consider seagrasses as important ecosystems in their own right. Being in Australia changed my life and it made me the research geographer that I am today. Taking what I learned from Australia, I've tried to be the kind of mentor who encourages students to actually ask questions and to be brave about suggesting solutions to problems and not just waiting for me to answer uh, all their questions. I think that's a, the single most important thing that drives me as a researcher. I mean, I love the research and the scientific part, but I believe that passing on all that knowledge to students, undergraduate students as well as postgraduate students, and I think that that's what is going to make a change actually, not just doing the science work, but then channeling all that knowledge and information and you know, hands-on skills in actually mapping out and monitoring marine habitats. All that needs to be learned by other people, by the next generation.